I'm reading now a great book by Naosi Max Sweeney, The West, New History of an Old Idea, and so far it's going great. Recently I was focused more on the psychology books, but oh, how I was missing the real academical, more history, sociology or philosophy centered books without any market demand to give practical tips, some value proposition, commodifications, incentives to sell, the storytelling and so on. Just nice facts. The book is about the division to us and them, West and non-West, how it was really created in the Athens more as an ideology as the stated facts. And this book presents a very nice story how the Greek and the Romanian Empire was very much connected to Asia and Africa. And the same ideology some of us now try to recreate, but this idea is already bankrupt. Maybe I will keep you updated how it's going farther in the next videos. Today we'll be talking about rectification and about five important benefits which comes when you have the rectified chart and you can also flip that around what five things you may lack if your chart is not properly rectified. Rectification in Vedic astrology is the process when we try to reverse engineer based on the past events and also the some static characteristics uh, to the original time. It's also called correction, so that means that something is off or wrong. So we are trying to get to that original time because what we have written is uh, often only um, average or approximation. Also the natural question would be what we are taking then as the starting the life. What is the birth time we should put into the software? So uh, for our school there are many views on this. But for our school, this is the cutting of the umbilical cord. According to Vedas, after third month of conception, the soul is entering that vehicle of our mortal body. Usually our time is a little bit off, so we try to change the ascendant in those divisional charts. These are a special additional charts for each areas of life, like relationship, career life, education, and so on. And they are very sensitive to time, often within five, three minutes. So we try to fit those ascendants to nicely explain the events in natives' life. And divisional charts are created based on the planet's degree, its advancement in the house and sign. So based on that degree, we allocate those planets to this additional divisional charts and uh, I would say that in Vedic astrology that would be the biggest benefit of uh, planets having a specific degrees. And those divisional charts are very sensitive to time, much more the main chart Rashi is changing approximately every two hours, but for example Navamsha will change every 5 to 20 minutes depending on the length of the ascendant in the main chart. We have 16 such charts and this is like zooming in into the specific area of life. So there we get much more details and it's very useful for timing. And I call this calibration because it's not only that one event must agree, but uh, all the events in your life must nicely be reflected in the chart, must fall in those specific ayanas or direction of life. So period of bad health must go to the bad health places, starting relationship to starting relationship places in the chart, uh, having a new career life or surgery or buying property apartment must fall also simultaneously to those places in the chart. So it's not that we are stretching, we are drawing, we are freely creating. No, it, uh, it is more like calibration. There is already some shape and we have to rotate it here and there to nicely fit all the places. It's just like color calibration, we could say. When you have a picture, there is some saturation, you have some colors, and then you have to uh, modify them to uh, reflect some palette, depending what you want to have. So similarly here, you have already some structure and you, it needs to click. All parts of it needs to find their correct places. So for example, if you're rectifying the Navamsha chart, if you change the ascendant, it will not only change the scenario in the relationship, but also for health, properties, 
and uh, career life. Uh, similarly, in the Shamsa, the chart of work, if you are changing it, it must also reflect the new job, the business start, the leave, uh, new partnership, each event also has to be nicely reflected. So we are not free in this. Usually we are uh, choosing between two to four options within some strict, rigorous uh, uh, dynamics, surroundings or uh, structure. Also because the periods are uh, repeating in that spiral uh, characteristics of time, it's not only that this event, for example, you have Mars Pratyantardasha, but also in the past, all those Pratyantardashas, which are repeating every few months, every few years, they must also fall in the places. So not only different events, but also the same events, but in uh, different Antardashas or Mahadashas, they all must fall nicely in places. Now, in the initial stage, I usually focus on the Navamsha, the chart of fortune and marriage, and the Shamsa, the chart of work, because anyway, uh, the clients will, in 90% of cases, will ask about these two important parts of life. This is Mercury and Venus, the two planets of Rajas Guna, and we know that Raja Guna is, uh, or the Raja's energy is the ruling the samsara or this material world. So most of the questions will be related to this. So if we have those two structures right, then we are fine for the initial reading. So the Navamsha will be new chart, which is created by dividing the sign into Nava, which is nine. So Amsa is parts. And uh, then we will have those nine containers of space. And based on position, this will be allocated to some new uh, spaces in the new chart. Similarly, if we divide the sign or house into 10 parts, we can create the Dashamsa chart because Dasha means the 10. And the special rules for allocation, because it's not always so linear and direct, there is some specific, we could say the functions. If this is here, then it goes there. So this is also talking a lot about the philosophy. So this is what I like about Vedic astrology that the philosophy is also hidden behind those specific calculations. So you can get a lot of meaning, a lot of also understanding what this specific Varga is about based on this uh, calculations type and this archetypes related to numbers. So what is really changing when we have the chart properly rectified besides the inner satisfaction? Remember that shloka from Sharavali who says that you cannot even lay a step in Vedic astrology without knowing or having the information or access to those divisional charts. And now we could make it more complex. The problematic is that these Varga charts, are they really only extension or they can modify the base? Because there are some important charts, for example, Drekan and Avamsha Shastyamsa, usually those who can modify the Rashi chart. For example, they can tell us which aspects of the Rashi are more important. If we follow this thesis, that these Vargas are not only extension of the static base, but they are modifying this foundation, then we can now understand in this light how serious was this statement of um, Kalyana Verma, of Sharavali, that, that we cannot make a step without the divisional charts or Vargas. And now the rectification also is a much more essential function before reading the actual chart. So the first argument how you can benefit from chart rectification in Vedic astrology is that the Pratyantar Dasha can change. And this is the sub-sub period. So we are often using this for timing. And if you have, for example, seven years or six years Mahadasha, which is quite short comparing to others like of Sun, Mars or Ketu, then these Antardasha, then the sub period would be around nine months. Then you have uh, Pratyantardasha, the sub sub period. If we divide it farther by nine, we would have it like uh, even less than a month. So this is like now newspaper astrology. You can get uh, each month the new Pratyantardasha. And uh, if you have your chart rectification wrong, then this will also be wrong. So first of all, the current estimation of what's going on in your life will be wrong because you will not have access to in which Pratyantar Dasha you already are, and also the prognostication for the future. Like, for example, we get a new job in the fifth Lord Pratyantar Dasha in the Dashamsa. So if that is off, then uh, this will be off by a few months. And uh, sometimes it is very uh, crucial to uh, make some decisions and so on. So, for example, you may be in the Mars Pratyantar Dasha, it will say Mars, but because it's off, you may be uh, in the Moon or in the Rahu Pratyantar Dasha. So it may go back or reverse. And um, 
if you want to predict something, you are waiting for that specific plan to come, or if you want to understand what is really going on. So you are taking this actual plant and see this in the chart. This will give you the wrong information. And this is the comfort. If you set them right, if you see in the past that all those Pratyan Tardashas, they have fallen in the places, then you have this uh, confidence that for the future it will also be so, because now this wheel of fate is rolling properly. Now the second thing is very obvious. We are using the Varga charts for timing. Not only Pratyantardasha, but generally. And if you don't have this chart rectified properly, then the difference between, for example, the sixth house in Navamsha and the seventh house in the Navamsha, separation, new relationship, totally opposite things based on this principle of maraka so the maraka something which is killing the house is in the second house from its placement so only one house forward you have something totally opposite because of that principle of maraka similarly the 12th house is showing the loss for example fourth house showing uh, getting a property 12th house from fourth which is the third is showing selling losing property so it's completely different meaning and it's only one house difference which could be a few minutes off so you may predict separation but what will really happen will be new relationship or you may predict new relationship will come in this and this time but the separation has uh, occurred in that time because it was sixth house instead of seven because of a few minutes off which is giving the wrong houses in that divisional chart. I don't know if you know this, but there is a, some specific tradition of astrology which says that there are no houses in divisional charts. And the Varga charts are only to uh, say the strength, so the signs are enough, right? We are, we can see in, in how many Vargas this planet is strong. So some are using the Varga charts for strength estimation only. So then you don't need to rectify the chart. But if you are in the tradition like us who say that no, the Varga charts they also have the houses then the rectification problematic is coming to us we need to solve this we need to rectify we need to calibrate correct the charts the minutes uh, because otherwise we have uh, wrong houses so this is based on this mathematical assumption or actions or in astrology the plant in the sign will be for a few months, maybe except the moon. And uh, houses will change depending on birth time, birth hour, birth minute. So if you don't use the houses, then you are fine with the sign placements of those planets, but the houses will be wrong or unknown to you if you don't have the birth time or you have the wrong one. So for some Vargas, it, the minutes is changing the four houses distance. For example, in Chatur Tamsha, we have that uh, situation, the, how this chart is calculated, that if you are going to the next uh, spatial demarcation line, it will change four house forward or backwards. Similarly, in the Drekana chart, we are moving every fifth house. These are the special gati, special jumps. So the question would be, should we use the Varga charts if we don't have them rectified? I would say we shouldn't because the half knowledge, half information is worse than having no information at all. So this can only bring you some confusion and wrong information. And as we know, this wrong information can be totally opposite. It's not that, oh, I have only three minutes difference, so it will be a little bit wrong. No, it will be totally wrong, right? Like the difference between if it will cross that line and the three minutes or even one minute can cross that line, then the difference can be as huge as from separation to having new relationship or buying a house and selling or losing a house. And this becomes even more serious when we start treating the Varga charts not only as an extension, but as the modifiers of the D1 or the Rasi chart, the main chart foundation. Okay, guys, if you like this video so far, please don't forget to click that thumbs up. According to what we know, it really helps the channel. Subscribe with the bell notification on. 
if you'd like to see similar videos in the future. And now let's go back to this analysis. The third benefit of having the chart rectified in Vedic astrology is the information about environment. We know that the Vargas charts are like Titi, the gas. They are also around 15 of them. And we know that having the Rashi chart is like the being zoomed in in that movie, right? We have those lenses like portrait lenses, 50, 85, when the protagonist is in the center, their emotions, their uh, pose and so on. So this is like having the Rashi chart. The colors or the events are falling on the person, various shadows, various events, but we don't know from where they are coming. We don't know the source. We only know the reaction. So this is the Rashi chart. So there are those 15 divisional charts. These are like the guests. We are going to that environment and also people from those environment, they are like guests who are coming to our world, through that Rashi border. So if you don't have information about the Vargas, we have no information about our environment. So this is also, we could say, we are entering here to this paradigm that uh, Vedic astrology is not only psychologized, it's not in that humanistic tradition, because it's not restricted to this subject, it's trend and it's not psychologized astrology, but it has information about our environment, which falls more into that karma reading category. Fourth benefit of having the chart rectified in Vedic astrology would be the uh, getting more clarity what's going really on. Because we know that, for example, fourth house is having the Vahana, which are the vehicles. We have the Matri, which is the mother, education, the land. And if this house is activated, uh, it may be hard to know, to estimate what's really going on. For example, let's say that you have ninth house activated in the Dasha. Ninth house can be studies, can be travel, it can be something related to father. So now having those Varga charts related or dedicated to those specific areas, we can open the chart of parents, D12, and see what's really going on to the father. We can open D24. Sidamsha chart, which is about education. We can see what's going on about the college. We can open the D4 to see what's going on with the travels. Are we moving to foreign land? Or we can open the 60 chart of the Sarva Karma, all events, all past karma activating our manifestation. We can see what is really going on. In this chart, we can see, for example, if the person is starting doing remedies and so on. The fifth benefit of having your chart rectified in Vedic Astrology is having access to all those details which the Vargas or divisional chart can provide. We can get information about spice details, their work, their health, the timing, and their family, what's going on with the children also, the, their health, their fortune, their relationship. We can read all that regarding health, the surgery, doctor, um, the education. We may have information when we can finalize any subject, when we will start another level of education with the property, the construction, when will end, will there be any delays, the time of misfortune, times which are good for selling, buying, and all those detailed information which we really cannot provide without having access to the Varga charts. And also, for example, if the person is trying to get information only from one area of life, let's say that your uh, querent is asking about the property only, then uh, if you have only fourth house, then you are very restricted. But if you have the whole chart dedicated, like D4, it's like the whole chart reading. So you can make the full chart reading only about one aspect of life because you have the whole dedicated chart to that uh, area. And because you have the whole dynamics and narrative, that was also the main feature of history in Herodot, that uh, he was not only giving information about what, but also the why. So those patterns, those schemes behind those events are something which really started the main definition of history. And similarly here, if you have those more points than one, if you have the whole structure, then you can also get understanding what is really going on. You can also provide nice tips because you see which yogas are beneficial and then you can activate those things. You can activate those karakas in those charts and so on. So you see there is the sacrifice, there is this complexity to rectify those Varga charts, but I hope you slowly recognize 
what big value they are hiding. The good thing is that we need to do it only once. When we have properly rectified the chart in the beginning, in the first reading, then it's done for life and then you can use that time and then uh, in the next readings you can just uh, have your chart properly rectified. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you a bit broader understanding of the need to rectify the chart and why the past events are so important in that process. Please don't forget to click the thumbs up, subscribe, put the bell notification on for more goodies like this. Uh, thanks for watching the end and uh, being here with me on this channel. And if you'd like to get more information about the analysis of rectification in the Navamsha chart, then please consider watching this video here.